I'm Catholic and I really love God. And it's really weird to, to people, you know? I'm telling Jesus, like, do something with these. Like, really, like, I want, I want miracles. Like, I want, I want people to look at these paintings and I want to see physical healings happen from people looking at these paintings. Like, literally, I think it's possible. I started this project not with the intent of doing this full time at all. I had no studio at the time. I had no place to do it. I had a full time job making good money, just doing sales. And I assumed that I would just be working on this on nights and weekends. I was just feeling very dissatisfied with my job. It was a great company, but I just was not, not doing anything creative. And I remember somebody asking me like, oh, do you think you'll be with your company for you know the next 10 years or something? And I just remember like that question just struck me because I was like, wait a second, what am I doing? This is where I, I work before I quit my job. Um, so where is your face covering? <laughs> I know. Okay, Trent, could you get a music thing that like has the word shame as her walk in? No. Music? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, here ah. comes Maddie. The girl who quit. <laughs> so here's Maddie Carr Creative. This is my studio. Some people are like, what are you gonna do? What are you changing? Father, we don't like change. The clinging to the traditions of things, and that's, that's fine, I, I appreciate that, but I just really appreciate their patience and trusting me enough to, to do this work. He had like shared with me as we were kind of envisioning how important it was for him to make sure that I don't hear any sort of feedback from the parishioners because there could be a lot of resistance to the change going on. And I just remember in the moment being like, well, I need models for these paintings. Why don't we just use parishioners? So these are the photos, just kind of um, photoshopped together all the people from the parish who volunteered for us. Every single person, when I would like direct them to have an experience with the Holy Spirit, would do something completely different. Like this guy, I told him to just put like his hands over his heart and he just goes like with his hands like this. And they were so beautiful. And I, I was just kind of saying like a little bit more casual, but he just did this like very reverent. And I was like, okay, I have got to keep you in that. This couple right here, these two, she's just so like beaming, smiling, so happy. And then her husband is just this stoic strength. And he's just like, okay, I'm receiving. And then these two little girls, they're their granddaughters. Faith and Hope are their names, which is perfect. This is definitely like a time capsule kind of a thing for our church. Like these are the faces of the people who are going to this church, who are part of this community in 2024. <laughs> a ton of different ethnicities, a ton of different cultures. That's the life of our church. That is literally who's here. It's so beautiful to be able to reflect that in the paintings. Our church, building looks very much like our church community. Well, Father is a uh, master homily giver, so I think that in your, uh, your interviews are kind of like homilies too. So you're saying that my homilies are kind of like interviews to church? Maybe. 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 You have in this artwork a depiction of the reality the concrete tangible. That's why I love the fact that I can look up there and I can actually name names and the parishioners. But you also have a spiritual reality that, that undergirds that and that is alive and what brings life to those things. I talked to Father Anthony after a mass one day and I told him, oh, you know, I do art, I'm an artist. He doesn't even look at any of my artwork to see if I'm any good. He just pulls me in and starts telling me like these visions that he has for these paintings to go up at the church with Pentecost and, and Jesus being presented in the temple. And I just remember so vividly seeing like red, blue, red, blue. I don't typically think in color. I don't typically think about the colors first. I'm typically thinking about the composition, the lines, how the people will look. It was just so clear in my head that it was gonna be that bold. And so I kind of made these color studies to show Father Anthony what it could look like and I wasn't sure if he would be up for it. I never imagined it being so bold as far as the colors. I mean, 
Maddie and I were joking, you know, like uh, artists of old that went through like a blue phase or something like that, right? It was like, well, you just went through your teal phase and your red phase, you know, in a, in a matter of moments. These are very bold paintings. You definitely don't see this monochromatic color scheme, red, blue, like even in our paintings, there's some really beautiful, vibrant colors, but it's not over everything. And so this was definitely a, a risk of a choice to do because you don't typically see paintings like this. This is a painting that um, I did recently. Actually, this was just gonna be a study to test out some colors. It's a limited color palette where I only use it's called the Zorn palette. I just use black, red, yellow, and white. Those are the only colors in this, and you mix them and, and stuff. I'm finishing up this painting today. Hopefully we'll get that finish, and, and both of them together are kind of like this statement about doubt, but specifically with the Eucharist. I have, um, it's kind of like Aslan. This is St. Raphael in the Book of Tobit which if I explained everything in this, it would take up the whole video. <laughs> this is Sacred Heart of Jesus. This is a, an image of, that's kind of inspired by Zechariah 2.5. This one is what is also a really popular one. It's my oldest print that I sell. Um, it's the Hemorrhaging Woman. This is one of my favorites. I drew, I drew this right after mass one day. I have the original in, in one of my books. Yeah, that's the original. The best thing in the whole world has been just getting the first one up on the wall. And then people finally saying, oh, oh, I see it now. That's good, Father. That's really good. People are coming here specifically to see the paintings and people have never been to Holy Name before. I've had like people commenting things like, Oh, I actually like hate the church. I, I've been away from the church for a really long time, but if this church was down the street from me, I would go to church every single Sunday. And I'm like, this is, this is wild. A lot of people have wounds from the church. It's from church members who are hypocrites. They hate what they think the church is. They hate what they think God is. And I think Jesus knows that. He's always calling. He's always speaking to us in ways that are tender. I hope that beauty can be this really like kind, tender bridge between people and the church. That these paintings can be that kind of alluring arm of Jesus. Having to let go of what I thought was my identity and comfort, letting go of being comfortable, being respected on a superficial level has allowed me to receive a lot more of an authentic life, more freedom to just be myself. I'm doing what I, I was called to do, and that's very satisfying.